ponentes. Hay una pregunta que ha llegado por Twitter de Bea eh, que there's a question that's come out of it from Bea who asks how can we innovate in material resource management strategy? This is Bea's question. How can we innovate in our material resource management strategy? I don't know which speaker would like to take this question first. Bien, desde luego, eh... Well, first and foremost, we need to commit to improving the quality of the materials that are recovered. We need to work on every stage of the process, from the design of the product onwards. We need to make the materials more recoverable. The combination of materials in the product, we need to make this not an obstacle to the recycling of it. So we therefore need to encourage eco-design to make materials more recyclable. This will lead to better quality materials at the end of the recycling process, which we will be able to use for more and more products in the future. I really don't have too much more to offer. I think you've cast light on this, and based on my experience, this is an attitude that we need to take both personally and professionally in all companies. From my experience in Philips as a manufacturer, as electric and electronic appliances, how you design this, it can last for a short time or a long time, and this can have a direct impact, but I don't really have very much more to add. One more question from the audience. Mm, some countries have various different colors for the bins. Some countries have even up to 15 different types of bins. They sort much more than we do in Spain. Uh, and we're talking about solid waste management here. Mm, so do we need to expand on the number of bins that we have? Do we need to expand on our sorting approach? Or are we still at a juncture where we need to raise awareness more so that we can then take the necessary steps? In my humble opinion, the important thing is for the sorted waste flows have to be the right size so they can guarantee that we get enough material in each of these streams. We don't always need to create streams in order to create streams because the difficulty of managing 15 waste streams is far greater than managing three. What we need to do is to establish mechanisms that will make sorting of the different materials or subproducts more efficient all the different products in the different streams, not necessarily just standardize the creation of more waste streams. That's my personal opinion. Can I just say, in, um, in the UK, that it seems to be recycling really improved when we had collection from homes, because it's so much more easy to put our waste into a box which goes out onto the front step because it takes less time than to go to a bring site. Um, in the research in Portugal we did, it was, that was interesting because the, in terms of domestic waste management, it was men who were taking um, items to the bring sites and it was part of a kind of social street activity. So I don't know if that might make any difference. I don't think the discussion is uh, the different, how many different fractions you have. Jean-Pierre explained this, that the issue really is before selective sorting, there are many other things that should be on our list with top priority. This is the major issue. Once we've got over that, which is quite a lot of work, from there, three fractions, 
What are the most important streams or fractions of the majority ones within terms of problems, weight, volume? I think there's one thing that we've forgotten, and that is the organic matter. This is something that Spain has never addressed, and many other countries haven't either. But it's not just three fractions we're talking about. We're not just talking about glass, paper, and packaging. Don't forget about or organic waste. Because we have to do this, or it's going to be a total failure. We don't just think about containers. There are many other forms of management apart from containers. It could be con collection in bags, contributions to the clean sites. There are loads of possibilities for managing waste, but we mustn't forget everything that upstream of the sorting. And don't forget about the strategic fractions, the bio waste. Solo una pregunta más. Okay. One final question, because we're running out of time. This is a question asked by many. S people awareness from Spain is not precisely a leader in Europe in terms of waste sorting. There are other countries where there's much more citizen involvement, citizen participation. So what do we need to improve so that we can therefore have a knock-on result on the whole process of recycling. Mm, citizens need to understand that it's not just a problem for the public authorities, but it's the responsibility of each and every individual and household in this country. As long as the grassroots and the regional local authorities are not transparent in their waste management, while we don't know exactly how much it costs us for waste management or the factors that increase the cost or reduce costs, and as long as the people don't have to pay for waste management that is directly linked to their behavior, then quite honestly it's difficult to make any progress because for people, for politicians, waste is not a problem. They used to be, we saw this in the video, but this is now magic. Somebody removes the waste from the street. We don't know where it goes or what we do with it. I think it's essential to enhance awareness, not just environmental, but also financial awareness. It's the only way that people will realize that we all have to pay to have our waste managed. One of the things we'll be looking at in the Urban Waste Project um, is to see how tourists visiting from countries that have strong recycling and waste management um, awareness amongst um, local people might get translated into the countries that they're visiting. So watch this space for three years' time. Um, we believe that, apart from what's just been pointing out, we need to work on um, education, this is key, and this has to be done right from the school when we're kids. We have a concept, and that is the using people, using children as agents of awareness, and this is a bottom-up approach. They educate their parents. Apart from the awareness, if you're talking about hitting you in the wallet when you're talking about reducing levels of consumption and especially in the consumption of plastic bags, disposable plastic bags and charging for them. I fully agree with Mr. Giron. We need greater transparency. We need to raise awareness amongst our people, but also in businesses and in local authorities. So these are the three main stakeholders. And we need civil society working alongside so that we can come to agreements on these hierarchical structure that, that we heard about in the keynote speech earlier. And we need to place the citizen at the heart of the process. Mm, we have a voluntary system. Uh, I might classify wrongly or sort wrongly uh, in front of a policeman and nothing is going to happen to me. This is not necessarily a bad thing. Perhaps we could have a system that rather than penalizes, gives bonuses to people who recycle well. Mm. And we heard about this already 30 years ago. Uh, there were a huge number of illegal landfills, fly tipping all over the place. We've now managed this. So I think this is a, a, a hope for all of us, and I think that we therefore need the three different 
uh, agents of civil society to work alongside together so that we can achieve our goals. I have one final question for Susan. I've been asked, in your hierarchy of the waste pyramid shown by Jean-Pierre, the generators of waste shouldn't have dominance over the engineers, especially women. I'm not sure you've understood the question. <laughs> it's a very technical question. The question is, in the waste hierarchy pyramid that Jean-Pierre showed, those who generate the waste, shouldn't they dominate over engineers, especially women? Thank you, yes. Um, yes, I, I think they should certainly have an equal voice. And um, because if we want anyone to change their behavior, we have to encourage them or work with them in ways which are going to um, get them on board. And um, for, for women, or for, for people who are engaged in all the domestic tasks, and actually I would like to see that much more shared in the household, and I, I think it's also very important not to just pigeonhole women into that role, that we may, should facilitate um, all kinds of waste management and household tasks in, in a, a way in which men and women can do that. But often people at the, um, at the grassroots or at the, the actually doing the, the work know better than people higher up the scale. Although I would also say that everyone who is a professional is also in a household, so they might reflect on their position in the household and, um, and bring that to, to the table as well. Pues ha terminado la... So that closes the first panel discussion. We're now taking a coffee break. And we will continue with the next panel discussion and presentations. I'd like to thank all the speakers for taking part.